Hey Rockers, welcome to another banging episode of Indie Rockers Ball. And we have a show for you. Oh my gosh, you're back, but uh, what about press start? And I, I don't want to talk about it. Are you sure you don't want Liam, to talk about it? Liam, I don't want to talk about it. Just start the news. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> German singer and songwriter Kim Petra released her new album earlier this month titled Turn Off the Light, which was a follow-up to her Halloween-themed EP that she released earlier in 2018. Although this past week Petra teased images from her shoot for her yet-to-be-released music video for the song There Will Be Blood. Not only is Petra working on releasing new music videos, she's also preparing for her upcoming tour with the new album. Petra described her upcoming tour as intense after spending countless hours practicing the choreography. The singer admits that she's nervous about how de demanding the choreography seems to be so far. But after posting images from the photo shoot for her music video, she feels confident that her creativity will shine through on this tour. Especially after this photo shoot, Petra says, I really want to kill every look we got. I'm just trying to stay focused and remind myself to arc, to breathe, and to look like I'm not trying. I feel like I've got my angles down. I've got this. Petra also mentioned in an interview with MTV that she was inspired by artists such as Post Malone, Lana Del Rey, Gwen Stefani, and many other artists that she listens to constantly. What do you guys think of her music? Let us know by tweeting at IRBTV with the hashtag music news. Guess what, Rockers? The extremely talented and hilarious comedy band Ninja Sex Party has just announced a third cover album filled with some iconic classic rock covers that is named appropriately Under the Covers Volume 3. For any of you who do not know about this band at all, Ninja Sex Party is a Los Angeles-based 1980s style comedy band created by and featuring Dan Avedon on vocals and Brian Wecht on keyboards. Dan is one of the co-stars on the YouTube channel Game Grumps, and Brian is a formal theoretical physicist who left his professionalship to work on a Ninja Sex Party full time. Since Ninja Sex Party's inception in 2009, the band has performed sold out shows coast to coast, released more than 30 music videos, and gained over a million YouTube subscribers. In addition to this, the band has four original albums, Not Safe for Work, Strawberries and Cream, and Attitude City, which hit number one on Billboard Comedy, as well as Cool Patrol. They also released two cover albums, Under the Covers Volume 1, which hit number 17 on Billboard Top 200, and number three on Billboard Rock, and Under Covers Volume 2, which hit number 19 on Billboard Top 200, number two on Billboard Rock, and number one on Billboard Independent, as well as number four on Billboard's top album sales. The third cover album will be released November 15th and has some phenomenal classic rock covers on it. Some of these are Def Leppard's Photograph, Closer to the Heart by Rush, and even We Built This City by Starship, which was released as a single and music video on their YouTube to hype the album's release. Go to youtube.com slash ninjasexparty and give them a listen and let us know what you think of the band on our social media with the hashtag music news. I can't wait to listen to the new Kim Petra album. It's going to be interesting for sure. I can say the same for Ninja Sex Party. Who the hell named that band? You do not talk smack on my band. I've been there since 2009 that they started, and I've been okay, so. Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna let you finish. But let's give the uh, let's give the viewers something to watch. Huh? How about a music lesson? You did not just Kanye me. What's up, Rockers? Welcome back to another episode of Music Lesson. This week on Music Lesson, I'm going to be teaching you Be Quiet and Drive by the Deftones. So the song is going to be in a half-step down tuning, and you're going to drop the, uh, the D sharp down to a C sharp, so it's in uh, an open like that. All right, so for the first part of the song is going to be the intro, and you're going to play one formation, and it's almost like you're holding a bar chord, except you're pulling it down. And instead, when you would play a bar chord up here, you're taking it down a few strings. So you're going to hold that bar chord position, and you're going to have your pointer finger on the seventh fret of the D, your ring and pinky finger on the ninth fret of the G and the B. So when you play that, you're going to play the bottom four strings, and it's going to be like an open chord. So the first note is this. And then you hold that same position, and then you slide it up to where your pointer finger is on the 12th fret, and your, these two would be on the 14th. So it's the same thing, except it's... 
So that's basically it, and then you play that four times. So all the intro is is. Okay, so the next part you're gonna do is that repeats throughout the verse, the verse and the chorus, and it's basically with, you know, except for a couple variations at the middle and the end. You're going to hold this octave chord, so you're gonna put your pointer finger on the ninth fret of the A and your ring finger on the 11th fret of the G. So you're going to play the top string open with it, and you're going to play these four strings. You kind of mute the middle string so you don't really hear it. So this is the sound you get. So you play that once, and then you bar the first three uh, strings on the ninth fret, and then you just play that the same way. So, so you do that three times, and then on the bar, you can add a little variation in there to make it sound more like the song, so you can go. And the only difference is at the end of the first, uh, the first part of the verse, you slide this octave position up so you slide it up. So you slide it up one, and then you slide it up to where your pointer's on the 12th, then back like that. And that's the pattern you do it. So slowly, it's like that. And then you go back to that bar chord. So you basically do the same thing. The only difference is, is that the, at the very end of the song, it's all bar chords, so you're gonna hold it with just your pointer finger. So you start playing open three times, so it's. So after you do that and you palm mute it with it twice, you go. So you bar the fourth, then fifth, then sixth for two beats. All right, so the whole thing together should sound something like this. Alright, so that's how you play Be Quiet and Dry by the Death Tones. Thank you guys very much for watching, and we'll see you next week. After seven years without a new album, British Lion will be releasing the album The Burning in January along with the tour. The band, which was originated by Iron Maiden's bassist Steve Harris, has been working on the album for years, and they said they're excited to release it. The album features 11 new songs. Two of the songs, Lightning and Spear er, Spitfire, are available when the album is pre-ordered. According to singer Richard Taylor, they have been playing some of the materials at shows and they've gotten fantastic reactions. Though Harris still works with Iron Maiden, British Lion is a personal project for him. Their first album, which shares the name with the band, was released in 2012 and was met with praise. It was called A Brilliant Al Album, A Brilliant Album by Kerrang. The album comes out January 17th and the tour immediately starts the next day. It will be the band's first time touring the United States. Stops on the tour include Dallas, Memphis, Lancaster, and New York City. The tour will run through February 20th. Howdy, music geeks. Today, we have a special announcement from the pop sensation Dua Lipa. After an absolutely stellar debut album, fans have been eagerly anticipating her next release. After two and a half years of waiting, the arrival is here. The artist took to Twitter on October 1st to tell her followers a new era. Thank you for your patience. Hashtag D2L. Dua Lipa reported to interviewers that the sophomore album will have a dance disco feeling to it. It'll be a party, she said. You'll be able to dance to the whole album. It's unclear just when the new album will release, but the artist simply wants fans to know it will be soon. On her departure from her more electronic themed music, she said that it would be weird not to depart from her previous style. To top it off, the artist released a single from the new album, Don't Start Now, that features the disco dance feel she wanted to emphasize. Did the new track make you want to dance around? Let us know what you feel with the hashtag IRB on Twitter. 
Love me some Iron Maiden. I had no idea their bassist started a band. And the new Dua Leaf album? Awesome releases all around. I cannot wait to check it all out. Yeah, me too. Rocker's Review is up next. <laughs> What's going on, Rockers? We're back with another Rockers review. I'm Steven. I'm Ian. And I'm Liam. And basically today we're gonna be reviewing new albums from artists that have actually come back from like hiatuses or just long breaks and basically just go over uh, what they've been releasing. So does anyone wanna start it off with their personal favorite? For me personally, because I'm a huge classic rock fan, like, you know, I grew up that way, I am very surprised by The Who releasing a new album this November. Um, they've released two singles, Ball and Chain, as well as All This Music Will Fade. And honestly, I have not been a Who fan, like, at all. Like, I listened to them here and there, and I've never been, like, I've never been really big on The Who. But these, ne like, two songs, I think their last album was, like, in 1976 or something. Mm -hmm. And, like, now they're just kind of reappearing and they just made a whole new album. And, like, it's being released and both the songs, like, slap. Like, they're really good. And, um, especially, too, because I know that um, Def Leppard did in 2017. They just did a cover of uh, Personal Jesus as well as did a couple, like, new songs in their, sto in their uh, the Story Of album, the best of, like, Def Leppard. Um, what about you, Ian? I know that you had a few up in your head so somewhere. Uh, I kind of want to take the conversation that we're having and kind of shift it into like a different kind of like instead of hiatus, uh, many of like the popular rappers and stuff that have died recently, XXXTentacion, Little Peep, they've released music, you know, after being killed or dying or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. whatever happened. After passing away, they, they release, you find these like features and releases and I just want to know like, what are your takes on that? Like, what do you guys think about that? Uh, well, in my opinion, I think it's pretty, like, shifty. Like, I know the estates still want to make money off of it, but it feels really bad knowing that, especially since they were signed to labels like XXX. He basically, his family isn't going to be making as much money off of, say, all of the music that he, like, had in the past. And that's kind of... The nice thing with Little Peeps, though, is they basically gave his mom, like, all the rights because he wasn't really signed to a label necessarily yeah. when he created all this music. So it's nice knowing that all the merch sales, all the movie ticket sales for uh, everyone's, like, everything's everything coming out on, like, November 15th. Yeah. Which, I like that, the fact that they're actually, the money's going to the right yeah. place. That, that's the one thing that made me really mad, um, was whenever I started seeing, like, features from uh, X, because, like, here... My personal opinion on uh, X is that, and I'm, you know, I'm never going to slander someone, especially after they pass away. But yeah, when it comes down to it, he, you know, he had bad ties with a lot of people, and now all these rappers are paying his label to use sound bits to put in their songs. Like, what if what if the guy had beef with these people? Like, what if they had bad blood and he didn't get a feature on their tracks before for a reason? Like, I don't, I, I hate how you know, corporate entities will take charge of the, of the music of these posthumous rappers and they'll, they'll throw it into all this stuff just to make money and it makes me mad. And that's why I like kind of what Lil Peep is, or had, um, what they're doing with his stuff, uh, as opposed to, you know, in other cases. I, I like how the money goes to helping real people and going to real people who are associated with the artist and not some corporation that just helped them get big. I think exactly. so too at the same time, like um, <clears throat> especially like there's a way of doing it and there's a way obviously not to do it, like yeah. you know how Little Peep did. Um, I know that this is going back to the classic rock vibe, but Jimi Hendrix just got an album released in 2018 from yeah. you know all of his unreleased music that he had made, like they just made like a couple albums, like an album or two, just with his unfinished material. They just mm -hmm. like, you know, if he wrote a song and completed it but never released it, or if it's just like halfway done. I know too, I don't want to be quoted on this, but I know it's like an artist, like a Bob Dylan-esque artist, but um, he had a lot of unreleased material. And I know that there's like a whole documentary or something about these, uh, this like artist, group of artists that wanted to take his music and actually make it and like make it into something. And he sold it to them. He was like, okay, like, you know, I wrote this, I haven't released it to anybody. He kept it like a vault and he just gave it to them. And they did this whole documentary of like, writing and creating like music that Bob Dylan didn't release to anybody. He just wrote it, wrote it down. It's important to give those fans what they want and it's important to, you know, honor the legacy of these um, of these musicians because they everybody, no matter what kind of music you play, no matter how bad it is, if that's, you know, the opinions of others, like you bring something to the table and yeah. you change the music industry in some way or another. So you got to respect them for that. And at the end of the day, I think that it's disrespectful to just throw this out right after they pass away. 
No, I agree. Um, I'd say wait a couple years, because like I know, like I said, even with Hendrix, Hendrix died so many years ago. Yeah. But just releasing something new in 2018, it gives kind of a fresh light to people that are still, exactly. you know, fans of him. So I totally agree with that. Just wait yeah. it out a little bit. Wait till like, mm -hmm. you know, the dust has settled with beef that's been going on. Give some people more time to appreciate that artist. And then maybe, you know, build that up and then be like, hey, maybe I would want something like this. You know, give it time to yeah. process and actually, you know, gain the respect before you want to just throw his solo on your album. I, yeah, I, totally I agree, agree with you. But I think that's all the time we have for yeah. today. So until next time, rockers, keep on rocking. And this was Rockers Review. Woo! <laughs> <laughs>in 2013, My Chemical Romance frontman, Gerard Way, posted a long note detailing the band's end. Way closed the note, My Chemical Romance is done, but it can never die. It is alive in me, in the guys, and it is alive and on the side of all of you. I always knew that, and I think you did too, because it is not a band, it's an idea. Like many others, including myself, who have had a edgy teen phase while My Chemical Romance was in their prime, I know I am extremely excited for this show, and we all here at Indie Rockers Ball hope this will lead to many more for them in the future. Let us know what you think about their reunion on our social media with the hashtag music news, and we will be sure to keep you updated on this glorious band's return. I am so excited for all of these reunions. It's so awesome that all these bands are coming back to make more music. I couldn't agree more, dude. Who are you more excited for, MCR or Rage Against the Machine? Oh man, I am definitely a Rage Against the Machine guy all around. Gotta love me some anarchy. Anarchy! D did you hear something? No, not at all. Okay. Well, I'm really hyped for MCR. You know, I can't wait to see what Gerard Way and the boys are cooking up. Heck yeah, man. But speaking of what's cooking, let's see what's cooking on Check This Out. Let's do it. Everybody. Welcome back to another performance on Check This Out. This week we have Ryan Sharp and Tom Lytle throwing some jams our way. So let's get right into it. How's it going? We're Twin Trees. I'm Ryan. This is Tom. This is called Waste Time. Listen now, girl, cause I don't think about the words you will say Sit on top of the world to toss and turn Watch you turn the page and it's all unheard You run so far so no one sees you again You don't know yourself You wait it out till someone sees the end And I can't let you go, yeah, I'm sorry Yeah, I've been wasting time I can't let you go She come back down Come back down Yes, I can't let you go Yeah, I'm sorry Yeah, I've been wasting time I can't let you go She come back down Come back down Listen now, girl You run so far From the problem again You don't know yourself To wait in line Someone crosses the fence and it's all unheard You run so far No one sees you again You don't know yourself You'll be the same You always, always was And I can't let you go Yeah, I'm sorry Yeah, I've been wasting time And I can't let you go She come back down Come back down And I can't let you go Yeah, I'm sorry Yeah, I've been wasting time I can't let you go, she come back down, come back down, yeah. Hey. 
I can't let you go. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry from the top. And I can't let you go. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been wasting time. And I can't let you go. And you come back down, come back down. And I can't let you go. I'm sorry. Yeah, I've been wasting time. And I can't let you go. You come back down, come back down, all right. You come back down, come back down, come on. This one's for your grandparents. <laughs> it's called Margaritaville. Living on sponge cake, watching the sun bake. All those tourists cover with oil. It's drumming my six string. Oh, I'm up from porch swing. The smell them shrimp, they been getting in a bowl. Wasted away again in Margaritaville. Oh, searching for my I'll shake her assault. Well, some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know it's my own damn fault. Well, don't know the reason I stayed here all season. Enough from the shore, but spread a new tattoo. It's a real beauty, a Mexican cutie. Well, how I got here, I haven't a clue. Wasted away again in Margaritaville. Well, searching for my heart, I'll shake her song. Well, some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know it's nobody's fault. I blew up my flip flop, yeah, stepped out of a pop top, cut my heel at the cruise on back home. There's booze in the blender, and soon it will render the frozen concoction that helps me hang out home. Wasted away again in Margaritaville. Well, searching for my house, I'll shake her assault. Well, some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know it's my own fault. Well, some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I know it's my own damn fault. What's going on, rockers? We just had a wonderful performance from Ryan and Tom of Twin Trees, and we're here for an interview with them to pick their brains a little bit. So to start it off, I feel like people should get a background on you two and like how you guys met and actually started like joined Twin Trees together. Yeah, man. So the pretty much the whole band started with Grant Schrettengast, myself, and our drummer mm -hmm. Alex Brewer. And the band, you know, we always had a lot of different influences from rock and hard rock, metal, right? That's mm -hmm. what was, that was our music's taste. 
and Tommy came along later on and we just started playing shows, right? Mm -hmm. And we learned a lot, we made a lot of mistakes, but then we also had a lot of successes and we, you know, we had a lot of fun doing it, both here at IEP and around Pittsburgh, around Indiana area, mm -hmm. uh, it's Hanning. Yeah. Well, yeah, your guys is like, musical influences like the, with the three songs you just played like they're all over the place which is never really <laughs> like a bad wanted. thing so we because, like when you're playing and like making music you kind of have to be open to everything so uh what are like some of your guys's influences tom you could start uh, okay well yeah i mean as a guitar player like i really wear my influences on my sleeve but uh, a lot of blues rock old uh, rock heavy metal uh guns and roses aerosmith van halen um, Ozzy, like some of those guys, especially from the 80s, the sort of heyday of the guitar hero, like that's that's really where I got a lot of uh, okay. my influences from. And you? I like pop punk a lot. Okay. Yeah, so anything like old school pop punk, Descendants, up to the Blink-182, up to, you know, you have the Four Year Strong into the story so far. Oh yeah, and there's definitely into, so much in that genre. Yeah, so you kind of unpack it all. I really like pop punk a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can definitely tell, definitely. So whenever you guys are like creating music, what's really like the process that you guys go through? Usually it starts off with kicking around some ideas musically um, mm -hmm. between the other members and myself and, and then usually the lyrics come kind of as we're writing the music. So it, it's a very collaborative effort and I think Definitely. With, with a lot of our songs like you were talking about with influences and stuff, it's a real uh, melting pot of all the different stuff. Like no, no two members of the band ever really we're coming from exactly the same place with the writing process. Okay. It's like a successful group project you do in school. Okay, so right. you guys Everybody's like, contributing. Yeah, you guys all collaborate at the time of writing, because I know a lot of bands will say, lay down the instrumentals for it, and then just basically ship mm -hmm. it off to the singer, and then have them do it. But like you guys all collectively do it at one time. Yeah. yeah. I would say in yeah, a lot of cases, okay. there, you know, it's, it's a song by song kind of uh, deal with that, like sometimes, Sometimes we'll have a song like completely tracked before we really present it to Ryan for uh, for lyrics, and in other cases, it's just been like a chord progression, and he's already got the lyrics, and then we kind of build around that with the other members of the band. Okay, so cool. It's, mm -hmm. it's very um, it's a very intricate like I guess layered kind of musical experience. Hey, it's but all about progressing. Got to start somewhere, I guess. Exactly. Right? Right. You know. But I think that's all the time we have for today. So until next time, this is Ryan and Tom of Twin Trees, and we hope you have a great one. Well, what an awesome performance. I know, man. What a great way to end such a great episode. Actually, yeah. What an awesome episode. And it's not like we did anything too out of pocket. For sure, man. Professional episodes all around. Hey, make sure to stay up to date on all things IRB by following us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and rewatching all of your favorite moments on our YouTube channel. Betty Spaghetti, man. You know I'm already uh, subscribed and all that. Come on, man. We'll see you next time, rockers. <laughs>